Julia Child makes the case for salmon, and I'm going to too. Oh! <laughs> bon appetit. So hello everyone, welcome to my home. It's actually really nice to have you here today. And you know what? Before we do anything, let's hear Julia's case for salmon. Oh, it's a literal case. It's a pastry case decorated within an inch of its life, she says. So I'm gonna head over to the French chef cookbook. Take a look. The case for salmon. Julia getting clever with the titles. It's called a kulibiak. Is a Russian fish pie? And uh, she says this is like an American take on that. It also, to me, it looks like a fish wellington. Here is a magnificent dish for those who love to play around with pastry. Sometimes. It is a rectangular case of pie dough baked until set in the oven, then filled with a delicious mixture of rice, mushrooms, and salmon, topped with a mock puff pastry and decorated with pastry cutouts, and returned to the oven to brown and finish cooking. A handsome party dish. Shall we? Bowl me. Thank you. Let's start off with our pastry dough. And you know what? A couple things here. Firstly, I'm mixing it all by hand today. None of this food processor business anymore. I'm anti-food processor when it comes to pastry dough. I just, I can't get it right that way. Second thing is I'm one-upping the pastry dough recipe because I like to have more than enough. This is six cups of all-purpose flour and a little on the cutting board for good luck. And toss in 10 and a half ounces of chilled butter, six tablespoons of chilled vegetable shortening. Blend it all together with the tips of my fingers, squeezing the butter and the shortening into the flour till it resembles coarse cornmeal, she says. Got an itch. Two teaspoons of salt into three quarter cup of water. Using a cupping method with my hands, I'm gonna rapidly add in some of this water. Rapidly, oh, you know what, screw the cupping hand thing, you know what you're doing. So I gotta make this damp, but pliable. So add a little water if necessary, but not too much. Gather that all together into some sort of ball shape onto a, some sort of work surface here. And let's just kind of push heel of my hand. I'm just gonna do a final blending of the fats and the flowers. Press it into like a kind of like Circle shape into a Ziploc. Chill it for like an hour or two. In a saucepan, it melts up two tablespoons of butter and two tablespoons of finely minced up onion. Uh, I guess saute these for five minutes without browning and without crying. One and a half cups of plain white rice. Yes, I rinsed it off. I did. So I gotta slowly cook that rice for a few minutes until it's uh, milky. I would say that's sufficiently milky. Three cups of chicken stock, or fish stock if you got it. And once that's up to a boil, and she says just to stir it once, just once. You put the lid on, keep it at a moderately fast simmer for 18 minutes. Hello, fluff it lightly with a fork. Oh, this rice is perfect. And then a little salt, a couple hoots of pepper. Keep this off the side. Let's get into mushrooms. Let's talk mushrooms. Well, do we have to? Yeah, it's a new year. Uh, let's ignore the mushroom debate this year to wash or not to wash. That is the question. And only you have the answer to that. Do whatever you want to do on your free time. However, the girl that lives in that room right there, she's not here today but she has gifted me with this. It's called the Shroom Broom. It's a million dollar idea, I'm sure. And I'm sure it does exactly as advertised. Wow, this thing actually, look at the Shroom Broom go. This thing is legit, the Shroom Broom, not an ad. Although maybe one day, um, colander. Thank you. I am still always gonna be a bit of a washer, really quickly, in the... And then with great washing comes great drying responsibility. Finally dice up my mushrooms. You could do that with a knife. If I'm gonna do it with the whiz kid. It just takes seconds with this, you know? 
I mean, obviously just don't fill it up so much next time. What I'm making here just gives me the same kind of feels as the, the Duke cell in a beef Wellington. So we're gonna have a quick coffee break. Thanks to the sponsor of this video, Trade. Sometimes the smallest changes can make the biggest impacts and Trade Coffee is a great addition to your new year routine. Now I added Trade into my life after discovering them in a similar way to what you're watching right now. Cause I personally need a good cup of coffee in the morning and what I was buying at the store was no longer cutting it. Especially if I bought a bag, I didn't like it and then I gotta finish it is lame. So enter Trade, a coffee subscription service that allows you to experience curated for you coffee delivered to your door. They've built a relationship with local roasters all over the country and their advanced Java technology maps your specific preferences to hundreds of different flavors and pairs you with a really solid cup of joe. I've been using Trade for months now and I can honestly say that I've liked every single bag so far, including this one. City of Saints Woodsman. It says here it has a tobacco and burnt sugar flavor, and it totally does. I didn't know that I would enjoy tobacco flavor in my coffee until Trade sent this to me. And if you're running low on coffee, let them know and they'll fire one to you as soon as possible. It's on your terms. Head over to drinktrade.com slash anti-chef and get a free bag of coffee with any subscription purchase. Thank you, Trade. Lots to do, gotta get back to it. Now in the recipe in... Now in the recipe in this cookbook, and also in her TV show, Julia uses canned salmon. And she does so because she's like, well, if you, you know, she's assuming we're cooking this on a Sunday and you don't have that much time. So you just like whip it up with the canned salmon. I am cooking it on a Sunday, but she's also giving you the option. She's like, okay, if you want to use fresh salmon, you can make that work too. And then she says, just add an extra 10 to 15 minutes onto the cooking time. So that's what I'm gonna do. Just nick it just a little bit there. Then you take your knife and underneath it goes. And what I'm doing is uh, removing the skin off the salmon. I never really do this, I always eat it. I was watching this Gordon Ramsay video on how to skin a salmon, so I have a general idea here. But I got my fillet knife and he does this. <laughs> Slide your knife underneath where the skin is and then you pull the skin and you slice through underneath. Oh, that works like a dream, Gordon. Voila, ooh, pretty good, and uh, it could be better. So I don't need to keep it whole, so I can take whatever I need off that skin, yeah. Skillet, two tablespoons of butter, a half a cup of finely minced shallot, two cups of the mushrooms along with half a cup of dry white vermouth and a quarter cup of cognac. We're gonna bring that up to a boil and leave it there for a few minutes until the alcohol evaporates. Now Julia says specifically that this is a recipe that you can just kind of toy around with. What she's doing is just a guide. I saw a bunch of recipes online that weren't Julia's and they keep the salmon filet whole in the case. I'm not gonna do that, I'm gonna follow Julia's recipe which is to combine it with the mushrooms. I'm gonna kind of break it up while it's in there. I'm kind of like choosing my own adventure right now because Julia's recipe uses the canned salmon. It's already broken up. But I think you can um, hopefully see my vision here. Yeah, I'm gonna do this. That makes sense, right? It makes sense. So that's two and a half cups worth of salmon. It feels funny breaking this all up like that, but it's been done. So you just gotta live with yourself. All right, that took minutes, but even still, like I'm gonna be baking this and everything along the way. So even if it's not all the way cooked through, which it is, it will be cooked down the road. All right, that's good. Half a cup of minced parsley, and then around a teaspoon of either tarragon or oregano. I'm using oregano as she calls it, uh, oregano. Definitely needs salt, so make sure you salt. And uh, what's going on? Yeah, seriously, what's going on? Oh yeah! Turn off the heat. All right, let's circle back to the case part of this recipe and the dough and the brand new loaf pan that I purchased for this very moment. This is 13 by four inches. And what am I gonna do here? 
Bake a loaf of bread? No, flipping it upside down. You know, the thing with Julia Child recipes is they keep you on your toes. You never know where they're gonna go. Butter up the outside of this loaf pan. Butter it up good. That's our case mold. Let me go get the dough. Nice. You weren't supposed to see that. I need two thirds of this dough. I'm gonna save this. Just trying to figure out why the dough was cracking while I was rolling it. And it's because it's been appropriately rested in the fridge to chill, but now it needs to hang out at room temperature a little bit so that the butter just kind of loosens up a little. Okay, that seems to have done the trick. Thank you, Google. Drape this carefully over top of this pan. That could be better, could be better. Okay, that should be long enough now. The problem is it's still kind of cracking. Easy does it, easy does it. Shimmy it over just a bit. I don't know, things were looking bleak there for a second. This is the bottom case part, so it's, you know, visually it's not gonna be the most important thing in the world if there's a couple pieces that are patchwork. So I need two inches on the sides. So she takes a ravioli cutter and she just does exactly that. One inch, two inches, okay. could just use a little touch up there. Bake for six to eight minutes like this, 425 degrees Fahrenheit. It's kind of like a blind bake of sorts. I put a tray on the bottom in case there's a catastrophe. Let's check in six and a half minutes. Cool. Now in her show, she has the warning. She says, hey, it's, it, this is awkward. And it is, and it will be, but it has to be done. Okay, now this has to come out. Please come out. Son of a bitch. She said that the sides would start flopping. I just didn't think that they would as soon as I unmolded it. This part needs emergency service. I got leftover dough here. There has to be a way to fix it. There has to be. I won't take no for an answer. This has to work. Careful. It's not like everything needs attention, but taking some of that leftover dough and patching up what does. I'm just using a little bit of water and butter to kind of use it as kind of just stick it together like glue. I hope everyone's okay out there. But I just need it to hold together to keep all the filling inside. So if this is how it's gonna look, I can deal with that. I'm gonna have this go back into the oven. Same deal as last time. Gonna keep it in there for maybe eight minutes. The previously baked part might brown even more so. If it starts to, I'll put like tin foil over top of that area, but it's also a risk I gotta take. So never say never. I'm gonna make a mock puff pastry with the remaining dough. What am I doing? Rolling this into a, a rectangle. Spread half of it with a tablespoon of butter and we fold over. Just gonna kind of flatten it out again. One more tablespoon of butter. Fold it there. There we go. Get this into some wax paper. So I just gotta do what she says, quite honestly. You could just use the Ziploc bag you've been using all day, but yeah, wax paper and you chill it. Here's what's gonna happen, okay? I'm gonna flip this thing 
And as soon as I do so, and I mean immediately, I'm going to grab all these objects and prop them up against the walls. Tough situation to be in. I can't grab that. Nope, 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 nope. Uh, I wish I had a second person here. Like, what's the hurry in doing this immediately, you know? Why don't you just let it rest for me? No, just do it now. She says to do it now. It's 100% not perfect. We understand that, but it will work. It's got to work. Just casually move my case to my right. Okay, I know it's kind of messy in here right now, but I'm just gonna persevere. I'm gonna get this next part done because I will clean up when this thing is baking at the end. Seems like a long way away right now, but so I have to make some white cream sauce and she's very, very vague in the cookbook of how to do so. All she says is you need a well-flavored cream sauce. Helpful. So I was watching her do this on her show and uh, she listed off all the ingredients that she uses for the sauce. So I jotted them down and I'm just gonna follow that. Thinking ahead. Toss in two tablespoons of butter, two tablespoons of flour. I think this is kind of very similar to a bechamel. I'm gonna cook this together for around two minutes. And then I'm gonna drizzle in around half a cup of hot whole milk. The rest of the milk, which is another one and a half cups worth. It's not really thickening up. I think I added too much milk, so I'm gonna add just a little more of the slurry I just made. Just a little more butter. Okay, I had to take certain liberties with this sauce. It has thickened up. However, she says in the book, it needs to be a well-flavored cream sauce. And this has no flavor besides milk and butter. So if I add some salt in there, and I'm thinking just like a little hoot of pepper as well, white pepper, how about that? She says if there's any salmon juices remaining from the salmon filling here, like if there's any juices in there, you can add them into the sauce. There might be, there might be. So if I take the salmon filling, put it into a sieve, and then any of the juices that run from that thing into the sauce. I don't know, this is what happens when I go off book. Very gently push down. Oh my God, it's working. <laughs> that could be mushroom juices and salmon juice, but I'll take it. And just like that, we got a well-flavored cream sauce. I'm gonna need this to get out of the saucepan because this saucepan is going to keep it way too hot for me. Just pour it into some random object right beside me, which is uh, my fat separator. Let that cool slightly and figure out what to do next. Things are getting crazy over here. Carefully bring over the salmon case. <laughs> it's standing upright on its own free will right now. What we're going to do, I know I just brought that over. There's just so much shit everywhere. Now lightly butter up this baking dish. Carefully bring the salmon case into the baking dish. Is that gonna be big enough to be able to remove it later down the road? Change of plans. We want a baking dish that's way too big so that if need be and there's a rescue op, there's enough space to play around with. Firstly, we're gonna start off with the rice that I made. A bottom layer of that. Don't push against the walls, whatever you do. I'm surprised that that's holding. Cover with a layer of the mushrooms and the salmon. Then next up, a layer of the sauce. Is the sauce too hot? Is it gonna ruin everything? No, it's fine. Then another layer of rice. Hold, for the love of heat, the rest of the salmon and the mushrooms. The last of the sauce seems to be holding even though there is a crack right there, it's holding steady. <sighs> oh, 
pile up of dirty dishes to my right, but let's keep going. We need to make our top and the decorations coming up next. He shoots, scores, easy shot. Roll the dough out into a rectangle, one and a half inches longer than each side of that case. Still kind of on the fence about the decoration part because I don't know if I'm gonna have enough dough. We will uh, see. With the case here, I have to paint the sides with an egg wash. What? Paint the sides of the case with the egg wash, which is one egg and one teaspoon of water. It's kind of a race against time right now because I feel like the, the walls of this case are inevitably gonna collapse. Thing might be too big for its own good at this point. Okay, I couldn't really talk. I just had to go for it. Press closely against the case to seal it. Clean up the overlapping part of the lid with my uh, scissors. Just make it look uh, nicer, nicer. Make sure that everything is glued together with the egg wash, as well as cover the top. Whew. with the remaining dough, whatever is left. Not much. We've come up with J and J. Jamie and Julia. An egg glaze over top. And then let's do cross hatchings on the very top. I use two piping bag nozzles here as my chimneys. That way this thing doesn't just blow up in the oven. Uh, steam will escape. 45 to 60 minutes in a 425 degree F oven. Middle rack. I thought I was basically done. And then I'm reading the recipe and at the very bottom, for serving, you'll probably want a sauce with this. It needs a bit of moistening as you eat it. And then she has some recommendations, including a light cream sauce with lemon flavoring. Now she doesn't have a recipe for that. So I just looked at other cream sauce recipes in this book and I'm just kind of gonna wing it. Two and a half tablespoons of flour and two tablespoons of butter. Similar to what we did with the other cream sauce. Cook it together. Add in a little milk to start. One and one third cup of milk, a little at a time. Come on, mix together. Okay, turn off the heat, add some salt, some white pepper, and some lemon juice until I say when. A little heavy cream. Kinda made that up. Light cream sauce with a touch of lemon. By Jamie and Julia. Yeah, that is a nice. Gently remove your chimneys. So your biggest platter you got. That fits perfect. This next part makes me nervous. <laughs> Wish I had that 15 seconds back. Crack the top just a little bit. <laughs> it's cracking. How the frick are you supposed to get it from A to B? Could have thought that through a little better. After everything I went through trying to put this thing together and I cracked it from here to here. It really puts a damper on my day. Oh well, order up! Shall we have a look inside? Whoa. called again?
Hell yeah. Well, we made it in the end, somehow, uh, some, some way. Uh, you know, always a couple bumps in the road, but they're more just like speed bumps. You go over it and you keep going. <laughs> uh, geez, Louise, I must say how good that was. Now you're looking at this sucker right here, right? And you're like, okay, where, where's the salmon? Believe me, you can taste it. It's a great combination. You could probably go a little less with the rice and a little more with... I'm not gonna get into it. <laughs> What's the point? Remember that this is kind of a play on a Russian dish, the kulibiak. In Russia, you would eat it with salmon or sturgeon, rice or buckwheat, hard boiled eggs, mushrooms, onions, and dill. That sounds pretty good to me. I've gotta say one thing, how key it was to make that late inning sauce there because that saved the whole dish. If I didn't have it, I would have found it too dry. So adding the sauce with the acidity from the lemon, and obviously lemon and salmon go so well together, perfect combination, saved the dish and, well, it saved the day. So yeah, if you have a lot of time, make it. If you're cool with making big messes, make it. Yeah, that concludes Julia Child's case for salmon. Case closed. This was Jamie and Julia. Bon appetit. Au revoir. Ha, ha, ha.